Hey guys, welcome to Ibuski City in Kagoshima Prefecture. In this city, there's the world's one and only Sunamushi Buro, or natural hot steam sand bath. The health benefits of these sand baths are said to be three to four times greater than those of regular hot springs. So, I decided to give it a try in preparation for today's video. After 10 minutes in this hot sand, I'm feeling revitalized and ready to show you guys Kagoshima. Well, it's a gray, rainy day, but let's see what Kagoshima has to offer. Welcome to the southernmost prefecture on the island of Kyushu. Our first stop in Kagoshima prefecture is at a mountain that's actually a volcano. Let's go check out this mountain. Mount Kaimon was formed by volcanic activity about 4,000 years ago. This now dormant volcano has had 12 major eruptions, with the last one taking place way back in the year 885. Mount Kaimon is 924 meters above sea level and is the southernmost volcano in Kyushu. The lake in front of this volcano is called Lake Ikeda. It's a caldera that was formed by all that volcanic activity years ago. Lake Ikeda is a famous lake today for a couple of reasons. One being that it's the largest lake on the island of Kyushu, another because it's believed that in this 233 meter deep lake, there lives a monster. Starting in 1961, several people claimed to have spotted this lake monster known today as Ishii. This creature is said to be over 5 meters long with a serpent-like body and plesiosaurus-like flippers. Oh, and razor-sharp teeth. Not quite the cute character we see here. It's a pretty nice lake, but it's too bad we couldn't spot Ishii swimming in it today. Now let's head to a town that was once home to Japan's military nobility known as Samurai. The town of Chiran has a Samurai residence district, but since it's a historic zone, we can't park in the main district area, which means... The parking fee is 200 yen here. But if I take this paper slip to the local cafe, then I can get a free cup of tea. Pretty nice system. Let's check out these samurai houses. Samurai were an officer caste in Japan from the late 12th century until the late 1870s. They were retainers of the daimyo, owners of large amounts of land. Samurai had high prestige and were extremely respected warriors back in the day. As such, the higher ranking samurai would often live in nice residences in towns such as this one. Some of the houses in this district are 250 years old. The samurai who built and lived in this district were from the Sata family. They were the samurai retainers of the Shimazu lords who controlled the Satsuma province, which is the western half of Kagoshima prefecture today. Come check this out. The samurai residences scattered along this nearly half-mile stretch of road is a great way of seeing what old Japan was like. Most of these samurai houses are still being lived in today, so we can't see them all, but we can still check out quite a few. Along this road are seven traditional styles of houses that were built. They're all semi-fortified with large entrance gates to the property, and have Japanese-style gardens that give each house privacy and helped to give samurai a view of visitors before the visitors could view them. It's said these gardens were built by masters from Kyoto, which helped give this area the nickname of Little Kyoto. Even though they were completely made by hand, these gardens were designed in a way to give the feeling of untouched nature that resembled Japanese landscape paintings and created a peaceful environment for the samurai living here. 
No two gardens are exactly alike. Each one has its own unique atmosphere. Walking through these gardens feels as if I went back in time to feudal Japan. It's fun to think what it must have been like for the samurai walking here back in the day. And I also came across this statue of a river monster found in Japanese folklore known as Kappa. They're human-like beings depicted with webbed hands and feet and usually share some physical characteristics with turtles. But I've never seen such a sexy one as this. One of the last houses on this road has a thatched roof and its doors are open so we can get a clear look at how the inside looks. Here's another thatched roof house. Look at all those tatami mats, pretty cool. They smell really good too. And here's the final samurai house of the day. I like the fish pond here. Having these koi fish in it helps give this garden an even more peaceful atmosphere. Walking back through the town, I noticed something hanging on a fence in the distance. Let's go see what it is. These are Japanese radishes called daikon. They've been hung on this fence to dry out and may end up being pickled eventually. Dried radishes may also be put into other dishes. When they're dry, they're said to contain more nutrients and can last longer than regular Japanese radishes. There's something interesting in this water here next to the road. Take a look at this. I've never seen koi fish chilling on the roadside like this before. This town definitely has its own unique charm. Besides the samurai district, the town of Chiran is also famous for green tea. Did I get a glass? You bet. And it was real tasty too. There's one more thing I learned about this town after my visit here. It was the departure point for kamikaze pilots during the last few months of World War II. There's a peace museum here today that talks all about this history if you're interested. Chiran's a pretty neat town, quiet and historical with a charming atmosphere. I'm glad I could show it to you guys today. We're on our way to see Japan's most active volcano called Sakurajima. We can catch a glimpse of it in the distance between the trees here. But before that, I'm hungry. Let's stop by Kagoshima City and get a bite. Kagoshima City is the largest city in Kagoshima Prefecture with a population of just under 600,000 people. There are so many famous things about this city. It was a busy political and commercial port city from the 1600s up until the 1860s. It's said that Japan's industrial revolution started here and there are a number of famous people who are either from here or connected to the city in some way. I unfortunately can't cover it all, but let's have some lunch and I'll tell you about one of the more prominent figures connected to Kagoshima City. My lunch today in this historic department store is sashimi, steamed egg custard, simmered fish, assorted veggies, white rice, and miso soup. Another popular dish at this restaurant is ankake yakisoba, which is fried noodles in a sweet thick sauce. This dish is loved by Kagoshima people. Most of this food is sourced from right here in Kagoshima, so it's nice and fresh. It was overall a really great meal. I'd give the dish I had a solid nine out of 10. Now that I'm full, let's go over a bit of history before we head to today's final destination. One of the most influential samurai in Japan's history is a man named Saigo Takamori. Born in Kagoshima Prefecture, he helped lead Japan's Meiji Restoration, which was the foundation of modern Japan. 
He's considered to be a hero of modern-day Japanese history and one of the last true samurai. Ken Watanabe's character in The Last Samurai is said to be based on Saigo Takamori. I come to this place for my ancestors. I never remember. Today, there's a statue to celebrate Saigo Takamori in the city of Kagoshima that's not too far from where he made his final stand against Japan's imperial army. This bronze statue of Saigo Takamori took eight years to complete and was made by the same sculptor who made the famous Hachiko dog statue in Shibuya, Tokyo. As I said before, our next and final stop today is at Japan's most active volcano. In order to get there, we'll take the local car ferry. Let's head up to the top deck and check out the view. It takes about 15 minutes to ferry across this section of Kagoshima Bay. We've reached the other side. Now we'll drive off this ferry and get as close to Sakurajima as possible. This observatory is in the lava field that was created when Sakurajima erupted in 1946. All around us, all those unusually shaped igneous rocks were once lava. Pretty wild. The number of eruptive explosions here has more than doubled since the 1980s, but the scale of each eruption has fortunately been much smaller in recent years. Today we can see a bit of smoke rising from Sakurajima, but thankfully nothing more than that. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed today's tour of Kagoshima Prefecture. With all of its beautiful nature and rich history, it's another prefecture I'll definitely never forget. That's it for today. I'll see you guys in the next episode where we'll explore Miyazaki Prefecture's picturesque Oceanside Shrine and stunning gorge with beautiful waterfalls. All while eating some tasty dried mangoes. Until then, take care.